When working in digital forensics, you will need to prepare digital media to receive a copy of the original evidence that you will be analyzing. This preparation is referred to as media sterilization. What is being sterilized is typically referred to as the receptacle drive. The procedure for sterilization is the same regardless of what type of digital media you are sterilizing. Wipe the media by writing zero byte values to all sectors, overwriting all data and formatting information stored on the media. Verify the media is wiped to prove that all data and residual data was destroyed by the wiping. Create the partition table and the partitions for the file systems on the media. Format each partition to create the file systems. If you are only recycling receptacle drives to put back on a shelf for later use, the wiping and verification operations are enough. Partitioning and formatting does not need to be performed until the media is ready to be used, and then only if files are to be stored on the media. If an image from an entire media device is to be acquired, partitioning and formatting are not necessary. Three tools included on Kali that are capable of wiping digital media are DD, DCFLDD, and DC3DD. These tools can wipe media using zero byte values, pseudo-randomly generated characters, or a specific character pattern of your own choosing. Media that will be compressed or used in forensic analysis should be wiped using a single repetitive character, ANSI null being the most common value used, or a sequential character pattern. Overwriting media with random character patterns is great for media that will be encrypted, but it can make it difficult for forensic examiners to determine if the patterns are valid information or not. If you have used media wiping tools before, such as Derek's Boot and Nuke, you have noticed many different wiping schemes are available with names like 7-pass USDOD, 35-pass Peter Gutman method, and pseudo-random complex overwrite. These multi-pass methods are for older storage media that may still retain residual information after applying a single-pass wipe. Because you will be using modern media to store your forensic backups and work images, a single-pass zero wipe is all that you need. One thing to realize is that solid-state drives are sterilized not by conventional wiping, but by using forensic-grade software that can issue an ATA secure erase command to the SSD through the SATA interface to reset itself to its factory default state, effectively wiping all of the information stored on it. Many newer IDEs and SATA and flash devices also implement the ATA secure erase feature. Forensic-grade wiping tools, such as Blanco, are able to issue erasure commands to intelligent media, basically commanding the media to securely erase itself. In this demo, we will be having a look at the DD, DCFLDD, and DC3DD copying tools that can be used to wipe digital media storage devices on Kali Linux. Before we go on, I must warn you that this demo is destructive to the contents of digital storage media. If you mistakenly perform a wipe operation on the incorrect media device, you may irrecoverably destroy data. Always double and triple check the identity of source and target devices before beginning any wiping operation. The DD tool is typically used to make duplicate copies of digital media files and the contents of digital media storage devices. DD can also copy a stream of byte values to a file or a media device, effectively overwriting and destroying its contents, a process called wiping. DD does not have a built-in feature for wiping storage devices, but it can write zero byte values to a storage device using the help of the dev0 device. The IF parameter specifies the input stream of zero byte values, and the OF parameter is the device or file to wipe. The fsync conversion option flushes the output buffer to disk before DD terminates. This ensures that the final output buffer of zero byte values is written to the storage device. DD does not display any output while it is operating, so you will need to look at the flashing light on the storage device to know that something is happening. If you want to write random byte values to a storage device, which is always a good thing to do prior to applying encryption to blank media, Use the dev urandom device to supply a stream of pseudo-random byte values. To use DD for wiping files, you need to specify the size of the file, otherwise DD will overwrite the file and continue writing and growing until the file and all of the free disk space of your partition has been wiped as well. 
Here's a way to have DD wipe a file using a single command, but you need to specify the name of the file twice. The problem with using DD for wiping files is there's no verification that the entire contents of the file was overwritten. Although the file itself appears to be wiped, parts of the file's former contents may still exist in unerased disk space. And you will find out that DD is really slow to wipe, too. The DCFLDD forensic imaging tool included with Kali has a built-in wiping feature. This command line wipes a block device using zero byte values. The devices specified by the OF option will be wiped using the byte values specified in hexadecimal in the pattern option. The pattern here is the hex value for ANSI 0. Multiple hex values can be used for a longer wipe pattern. The input and output buffer size specified in the BS option are used to speed up the wiping operation, so try different values and see what works best. Text wipe patterns are specified using the text pattern option. Notice the byte values are hex 30, which is the ANSI character 0. Wiping files with DCFLDD is basically the same command line used with DD. Include the hash option if you need to hash the values of the device as it is being wiped. The DC3DD forensic imaging tool included with Kali also has a nearly identical built-in wiping feature. The default wipe operation is to overwrite a specified device using zero byte values. This is how to overwrite a device using a repeating pattern of byte values specified as hexadecimal digits. To overwrite a device using a repeating pattern of byte values specified as text strings, use the TPAP parameter. To verify that the wipe operation did what it was supposed to do, specify the HWIPE option, a cryptographic hashing algorithm to use for verification and an optional wiping pattern. After wiping, DC3DD will calculate and compare the hash values of the wiped media and wiping pattern. A match indicates the wiping pattern operation occurred as expected. The wipe and hwipe features only work with devices if you want to wipe a file using DC3DD. You must specify dev0 as the input and the file to wipe as the output. You also need to specify the size of the file in disk sectors. Although the contents of the file will be destroyed, as with DD, there is always the possibility that remnants of the file's previous contents may still remain on the storage device. After a drive is wiped, you may want to partition and format it for immediate use. There are command line partitioning and formatting tools, but the GUI application gparted is much easier to use. Let's have a look at gparted now. gparted must be started with root privileges. Use the sudo command to start gparted if you are not running from root. Here is the gparted window. Although gparted is simple to use, how to use it is not obvious, so we need to know where and in what order to make selections for partitioning media. First, we must choose the proper device. This drop-down menu lists all of the block devices that gparted can operate upon. You can look through the devices listed without making any changes. Let's select this USB flash drive I have attached to my Kali workstation. I also like to enable displaying as much device information as possible. So, we see that this device has been wiped and it contains no partitioning information. We need to first create a partitioning table using the device menu. And we need to select the partition table type. And click the apply button. Next, we need to create partitions in the table using the partition menu. Here we select the number of partitions to create, their sizes, and file system types. Let's create a small primary partition for FAT32. Now we add an extended partition to the remaining unallocated data space.
Now let's create two Linux partitions in the extended space, one ext3 and the other ext4. With all the partitions created and file system specified, we now commit the changes to create the partitions. Remember that any changes you will make need to be committed by clicking the green check mark. And the partitioning is finished. Let's have a look at the USB flash drive in the dev directory. We see the device as SDC, the primary partition as SDC1, the extended partition SDC2, and the two Linux partitions as SDC5 and SDC6. We can use the Linux file command to verify these device partitions and their file format. You can also use gparted to delete partitions by right-clicking on each partition and selecting Delete. Remember to click the green check mark to apply the changes to the storage device. If we look back in the dev directory, we see all of the partition files for the flash drive are now gone. However, realize that partition information removed in this way may be recoverable, and this may not be what you want. Wiping a drive is always the most assured way to render information unrecoverable. In this demo, we saw how to use DD to wipe a disk in a file using zero byte values and pseudo random byte values. We also saw how to use DDFLDD and DC3DD to wipe a disk and a disk file using zero byte values and repeating byte value patterns. We also saw DC3DD perform a verification of a wipe using cryptographic hashing. Finally, we saw how to use GParted to partition and format a media storage device.